Anesthesia school is stressful. It, it really is. No, no matter how you cut it or what advantages you come into it with, it is stressful. And anybody who says that it's not is a liar. And you can tell them I said so. When I was in school, we had about 75 students in our class. One or two of them dropped out because they didn't think they could handle it. One or two of them eventually flunked out for one reason or another. There was always a huge exam looming. There were papers that were due. There was more to read than I'd ever read in my life. There was always, it seemed like, a new clinical site where I didn't even know where to park, much less where the operating room is, much less the expectations they had for me when I got there. So there was this constant level of stress just by it being school. In addition to that, you have just the regular stresses of, of life. Uh, one, you're probably broke because you're a student and you're not working. Um, you have the stresses of relationships are stressed because of all of the time that it takes to get through school. And all of these things add up to just create a baseline level of stress that is very difficult for people to handle. It's not unusual for people to feel overwhelmed while they're in anesthesia school. It doesn't take many more additional problems to feel like they're going to push you over the edge. When you're feeling like that and you're wondering whether or not you can get through the program or whether or not you're going to be able to make it or whether or not you can handle one more day of another problem that you didn't expect, the things that I would like you to remember, there's two major things that I want you to focus on. One is that you were selected for this. You were chosen for this. Anesthesia school is not something you can just walk up and sign up for. You've made it through the qualification process where they look at your grades and your GRE or your MAT scores and your resume and your work history and you meet the minimum qualifications to apply. But there is also an interview process where a group of people asked you questions and what they were fundamentally trying to get at is do you have what it takes to get through this program successfully and not just grades and not even just perform well clinically or pass boards but can you handle the stress of the program and they obviously if you got in the program convened and said this person does they said you do have what it takes this is a panel of faculty CRNAs who do this for a living and they know the stress that they're about to put you through they know the stress that accompanies life in general, and they decided, yep, this is the type of person that has what it takes to get through this regardless. So I don't want you to forget that you were chosen from a group of people who decided that you had what it takes to get through this. So if you don't think that you do, remember that others do believe that you can get through this. The second thing to remember about all of the stress that accompanies school is that it's part of your training too. Anesthesia is a wonderful field. It really is. It can also be a really stressful field. There can be moments that your heart is racing and you have to be able to handle that sort of stress. The only way that you can get to where you can cope and function under extremely stressful circumstances is to go through a lot of extremely stressful circumstances. And this is just part of your training. You are while you're trying to get through school, you're building the emotional muscles that it takes to cope with this job. So when the OR is falling apart and people look at you, they want to see somebody who has a calm, reserved appearance that can make decisions when they need to. That's what they're relying on anesthesia for, and that's what you're training for. So it's easy for me to say, well, it's stressful and that's just how it is and it's stressful on everybody, but what do you do about it when you're trying to actually get through it at that moment? The first thing I would say is to remember that the feelings of stress, all this overwhelm, those feelings are real and you don't need to ignore them or try to swallow them down because they'll just accumulate, which isn't healthy. But even though those feelings are real, I want you to remember that they aren't your reality. Does that make sense? So what I'm trying to say is only you can choose how you respond to a situation or respond to the stress. If you are feeling overwhelmed, you're allowing yourself to feel overwhelmed. Nobody else can make you feel one way or another. You are 
consciously or unconsciously allowing that to happen. Once you can separate yourself from that a little bit and take a step back, then you can realize, hey, I'm in control of this situation, so let me take a deep breath and start over. The second thing is to separate out the real problems from the ones that you're just including because you feel stressed. What I mean by that is it's easy when you have one or two problems that are genuine real problems you have to deal with for them to suck up all of these other little issues in your life that aren't real problems now or aren't significant and expand them into something that they aren't. So it's like a big problem passes over all of the little problems in your life like a magnifying glass, making them bigger than they are. You have to take that magnifying glass away and say, what am I actually dealing with today? What are the problems I have to deal with right now? Handle those and then you can get to all of these other little things when the time comes. The next thing I would say is when you don't know what to do, just keep moving. Just take another step forward. You're eventually going to get there. Even if you don't feel like you know if you're going in the right direction, as long as you keep moving, it's a lot easier to keep things going in line and solving problems. The first thing that a lot of people have to overcome when they're stressed and depressed is their own inertia. Once you get moving and you have momentum, things will start to happen. The next thing I would say is to draw on your own past experiences, particularly your own past difficult experiences. So if you can say, well, I got through that situation, I can get through this one, and you will, you certainly will. As stressful as it seems now, you will get through it. So I remember when I was in undergraduate school, I was on my own and I was young and I had two part-time jobs but had not gotten a paycheck from either one of them. I didn't have enough money. I was living off of the little packs of saltine crackers that they had at the hospital where I was working. And I just thought, how am I ever going to get through this? I don't have enough to pay my bills. I can hardly afford one of my textbooks because they, you know how textbooks are so expensive. Um, but I, I did get through it. And when I got to anesthesia school, I could look back on that and say, well, you know, as tough as that seemed then, I got through it and I'm going to get through this. So you may be in a situation where you're saying, well, I've never been in anything this stressful. I've never had to face this many problems at one time. Well, that's great. And you know why? Because that means that this is the moment for you that's going to redefine what you're capable of and what your standard of what difficult means for the rest of your life. It will change the entire arc of what you feel scared of doing and situations that you feel are too stressful to confront. I'm here to tell you, getting through this is worth it. There, I can't stress that enough. Just stay in, keep moving, keep pressing forward, and, and you're, you're going to be successful. And just remember, you got this. You've got it.